Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Brookfield Republican Town Committee's Meet the Candidate, uh, 12th anniversary of Meet the Candidates. Uh, we have two candidates uh, I'd like to welcome and thank for putting themselves out there and running. Thank you for actually taking the time to watch this event, and thank you for Brookfield C Cable Access and Sharon Mahoney especially for taking her time out to bring this to you. I'd ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. The town election is Monday, May 7th, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have one contested race. It's the Board of Health. We have the incumbent, Mr. Dan Leahy, to my right and Mr. George Hurdle to my left. Uh, the format is the same pretty much every year as we have an opening statement. Then we turn over to the crowd if they have any questions from our candidates and then we'll close with our closing statements. Any questions from our candidates? No. All right, I'll let you go first, sir. Okay. The floor is yours. Um, give you an idea of um, who I am. Um, I'm a uh, longtime businessman working in sales working in bank operations, things of that nature. So I've worked with uh, small groups of people and with very large groups of people, and I've also managed small groups of people and departments of 50 or more. Uh, worked for First National Bank of Boston, South Shore National Bank in Quincy, and when it became a holding company and bought five more banks, some of which are right out here, um, I was chosen to be on a team to consolidate those banks, their operations, and uh, set the whole thing up in Dedham, Massachusetts. Uh, and we did a good job of that. Um, 17 years in that business, and my bank got bought. And then it got bought again, and then it got bought a third time. So I fled banking uh, for good. Later I got into um, sales for a Kodak broker and sold microfilm, all of that type of stuff, uh, business to business. And once again, that company got bought and bought again, and I fled. Um, so I went into my own business for a few years, doing landscaping, uh, home repairs, things of that nature, uh, until I hooked up with ADT Security. And I worked in the small business field, selling uh, cameras, alarms, all of that stuff moved on to commercial, sold fire alarms, uh, access, control, all of that product. Um, and I retired about a year ago, um, and I've been working here for the Town of Brookfield um, Transfer Station as a volunteer for many years. Um, but uh, at one point, Dan said to me, you know, you're here all the time anyway, and we lost a guy, so why don't you, you might as well get paid for it. So I took the job. Um, and up to that point, I wasn't really looking at the transfer station. I was cleaning up the ticket or leave it and organizing the books. That was what I loved to do. Um, but once I became an actual employee, um, I started to notice things that I might be able to improve. Um, again, um, with Dan's approval, I was able to build shelves in that book trailer there, mm -hmm. um, which and then organize it so they couldn't be piled all over the place. And uh, it's been a very nice uh, place for the people of Brookfield to come into. Um, <clears throat> so that was about it. I'm retired. Um, I pursue my own business out of my home. Um, so I have all the time in the world during the day or any time I can drop what I'm doing and uh, work on the jobs that this board might have. I have uh, uh, thought about a lot of changes that I could make in not only in the transfer station but things I've noticed in town that I would like to pursue and bring forward to the board. Um, so here's the why of why I'm running for this position. Um, I'm a very, very independent worker and a self-starter, so I take it upon myself to get involved with things. I just can't help myself in that, that area. Um, so when I heard there was an election, 
for this position, that's why I'm here. Um, so as a result of that, I've been getting involved with a lot of things around the transfer station. Um, Susan Landau from the DEP um, had done a, uh, a um, inventory of our uh, transfer station, found a lot of issues that needed addressing. So I've been actually talking with her off and on and accomplishing some of those things, like signage. Uh, the signs are all made. Some of them are up and some of them are yet to be put up in, in uh, Commonwealth of Mass terms. Um, the uh, tires used to be piled in a heap over there filled with water and a mosquito hazard, which was another DEP issue. Uh, I got permission to use an empty dumpster and we stack them in that dumpster now, tires. Um, the paint backlog has been an issue. That is a, uh, first of all, it's illegal to store paint the way we do. Um, it's a hazard and this paint's been there for, God, maybe a decade. Um, so I've been working to get rid of that paint. It's taken three drums out already, and I've filled two more 55-gallon drums. I've got another probably three drums to finish that project, and all the paint will be gone. Um, and then the hazardous chemicals are another situation that needs to be addressed. Those are harder. Uh, because they have to be sorted and looked at by a professional chemist. Uh, and these are going to have to be put in boxes and taken away and, and paid for. Simple as that. Um, and uh, the Board of Health has already decided not to take in any of these materials anymore. Um, so that's a good thing. They won't be, uh, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, during my employment and on my own time, I have visited uh, boards of health of five different towns, um, met with Irene Congdon several times, uh, she's from the uh, Mass DEP, um, did a tour of the Casella plant in Auburn to find out uh, how we work there, um, and I've become somewhat of an expert on the recycling that goes on in that plant and written many articles in the Brookfield Citizen about it. Um, I've visited seven or eight vendors that take things from transfer stations like ours and um, resources that we are currently paying to get rid of. Uh, so some of the things that I want, that I found and I want to work on, um, I have a vendor that will take large foam and plastic pellet bags for free of charge. Um, I've got a vendor that will take propane tanks away free of charge and maybe even pay us for them. Um, a vendor who will take all of our Freon-based equipment, fridges, air conditioners that we pay dearly for now, free of charge. Um, book overloads, we, we get tons of books in there. To make space, we have to throw them away. Hard covers have to go in the landfill. They won't take them in the recycling. Um, so I'm working with a vendor to bring in, um, you know, from appointed, we'll bring in bins for those books. It'll be staff only so that the town gets first whack at the books. Then we'll take the overload and lock them in those bins for that company to take away. Um, there's some state safety conditions that I address at the transfer station. Um, I have in the back of my heart and always have since I've lived here, unsightly and derelict buildings and properties around this town. People say, oh, you love the Brookfields. They love the Brookfields. I said, well, you drive down some of our streets and you might have a second opinion. You know, I would like to see work done on getting those things dealt with. Um, the other thing I'm interested in is trash piles, sanitation, vermin, and keeping our town clean. And I want to learn what the town of uh, Brookfield Board of Health can do um, more than they're doing right now with elderly uh, issues. And that basically sums it up. Thank you, sir. Mr. Leahy? Very good. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Dan Leahy. I'm a candidate for re-election for the Board of Brookfield Board of Health. I seek your endorsement for another three-year term. 
I was born in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1965 and was educated in Spencer, Massachusetts. I graduated from David Prouty. My formal education was from Worcester Industrial Technical Institute. I graduated there in 1985. I then entered into the civil engineering and project management field. Um, from there, I gained experience in that field, uh, invaluable to the Board of Health. Um, I've personally designed and installed hundreds of septic designs. I'm well versed in Title V of the Massachusetts State Code regarding on-site septic systems. I feel that I bring something to the table. Once I settled in Brookfield, I became involved in town politics. I lived in town for about 23 years. For the first 10 years, I lived in a beehive at the head of the common, saved my money and bought a house. I then got involved in town politics. I was first the chairman of the Brookfield Planning Board for seven years, not the, plan the chairman for the entire seven years, however, uh, held that moniker. I'm currently the chairman of the Brookfield Board of Health, serving faithfully for the last nine years. And I, I enjoy that serve the service that I provide to the town. I take this charge seriously and I appreciate the opportunity to serve. Anyone that knows me to in, can attest to my character. I sincerely do not have a horse in the race. I'm not in this to get my neighbor or to uh, for notoriety or anything of that nature. I serve simply to serve. Uh, because of my background in the professional field, um, I feel that I bring something to the table um, for the Board of Health. I uh, believe in always teaching and offering up educational inputs to some serious questions that arise, whether it be in the Planning Board or now at the Board of Health, all in order to come to a well-educated and well-thought-out decision, regardless of the hyperboil or the sensationalism of the topic that may be at hand. We see through it. I don't get caught up in that uh, gibberish. and. Uh, it's not popular to some candidates or some uh, constituents. They, they, they don't like that, uh, that I'm, I'm in that frame of mind. However, you can't go into an argument or, or have a, a heated discussion about any one topic without having a rational head. So I believe looking at a, at a point from all different angles is the best way to uh, come to a resolution, an educated resolution. I have always... Uh, Listen to my constituency, regardless of my own opinion. Um, I've asked questions, I've sought uh, answers from my constituents to see how they feel. I'm an elected official, therefore I must vote with my heart, but mostly for what you feel. Um, and I believe that I've done that through my tenure and have con continued to look out for the best interests. George makes some very good points about the uh, transfer station. He's been very, very helpful, very instrumental, and has taken a great mantle to take on some of these uh, things, but it's not like we weren't doing them already. In attempts of being a nice guy, I, I entertain taking the paint on, and in doing so, we've received so, much, so many volumes of it that we're going to have to host a paint collection day, because everyone's guilty of having at least eight gallons of paint in their basement or their garage. So that will take place, and I commend him totally on every. I've never opposed George on any of his suggestions or anything that he's done down the transfer station. I commend him for his actions, not to admonish him for them at all. So I just I want that to be stated. Um, I'm going to save some of this for closing arguments because I don't want to go through my whole uh, liturgy here. But uh, that's more or less who I am. Thank you, sir. Now the great part, questions. Do we come and ask questions? Anybody? Not all at once. <laughs> well, I'll just, uh, just ask um, what each of you see as the biggest challenges you face, either uh, on the Board of Health generally or at the transfer station. Did you want someone to answer it first, or do you? Oh, well, start with the chairman, Dan. I would say on-site septic systems are the biggest concern in town, where 100% of the population in this town is serviced by on-site septic systems. I know I've always heard whenever this topic comes up, it's always, oh, years ago we were offered a grant, we were offered a grant, yeah, we can't go in a time machine and go backwards, we can only go forwards. It's lucky that we have the municipal water department that we have in town, and we have excellent, excellent drinking water. I've 
brought some with Mike tonight. Uh, but the septic systems in the center of town and the village are going to fail. They're eventually going to fail if they're not already in systematic failure right now anyway. So a master plan or a, for lack of a better word, master plan of what, what we're going to do, how are we going to solve that problem, that's a long range uh, projection. I also uh, happened to have been on the solar uh, advisory board when that was put together and we put a solar array on top of the cap landfill, that was a mutual agreement between the select board at the time and the Board of Health. Um, it was a great education for me and what it was based upon was the actual usage of the town's electricity. We receive a reduced rate for the next 20 years and we're in about, I would say, at least year five of it. In year 14, we have the opportunity to buy into that. I'm the only one that seems to be talking about economic growth for the town of Brookfield um, instead of talking about going after this guy because he's got a purple shed, a, a pink house. And I'm not trying to point out anybody in particular. I'm just saying nobody's talking about economic growth. And what I see is a benefit to this town would to be allure businesses to the town to generate additional revenues. Uh, to lessen the, lessen the burden of taxes on the residents of this town that seem to shoulder every single whimsical you know, thing. But uh, to do so, it would be very difficult to entice somebody because you can't give them a reduced rate on their taxes. However, if you be, create a parks department or an electric department, electric and light department, train a couple of the uh, already uh, on board uh, employees of the town, in the facilitation of changing the transmitters or whatever has to be done to it. It's, there's not a lot of maintenance to these things. We can expand now and offer a business a reduced rate on their electric bill, which is something that may entice a, bit, a large business to come to town. This is just me thinking out loud. I know it's beyond the Board of Health's purview, but uh, being on the Solar Energy Committee, gave me that great education and I see that as a benefit to the town and nobody else is talking about it. I sincerely hope that four, year 14 doesn't come, go, and uh, nothing's done. So those are some of the things that I see as issues for the town of Brookfield to move forward into the 25th century or the 23rd century or where are we? All set, sir. Well, as a new person in the political field here, I'm not a politician, but I am, um, I am concerned about the transfer station uh, because the world is changing regarding recyclables and where our trash is going is another big issue right now. Um, so I think it's a more imminent uh, problem right now for us to work our way through. Um, Southbridge is gonna close down um, we're going to have to find a new landfill or uh, incinerate or do something along that line. Uh, recyclables are virtually not going to China anymore from, our, uh, from the United States uh, because they've been too polluted. Um, you know, people are still throwing the wrong things in the recycle and whole, whole uh, loads going overseas in, in containers get rejected. They've been going to their landfills as a result, and they're just not going to put up with it anymore. So I think these are issues um, that I'd first like to get involved with. The other issue are derelict houses. Um, I'm so tired of driving down any road in town and seeing these falling down, uninhabited, uh, whoever, who knows who owns them anymore, uh, buildings. They're an eyesore. They're a trap for kids to get in and vandalize, uh, vermin, things of that nature, and they bring down all the property values around them. Um, I don't know, there's one up there on uh, Limerick Street that I know about, and I know it's being dealt with, but right next door is a fine house, and it's not 100 feet away from it. And I feel so bad for that homeowner to have to sit and look at that mess every time they get up and go to work. So these are, those are two issues that I'm serious about in my position. Thank you. Chair? For those of us of a certain age, um, elder affairs are important. 
And I'd like to have each of the candidates address, either in the case of the incumbent, what they have done or tried to do for the elders in this town under the Board of Health, or in the case of the um, first time candidate, what he would like to do as a member of the Board of Health for the elder population in this town. Thank you. Do you want to go? I know personally I've uh, taken handicapped accessible uh, materials that go in the give and take. Someone's loved one passes and the shower seat comes in and the walker comes in and the wheelchair comes in. Those are put aside and given to certain residents that need them, not to scrap metal. Um, so in, in, in the instance for what have I done for the elderly, I, I feel that I facilitated a lot of good people with things that they really needed that would have cost quite a, quite a bit of money uh, to, to make that happen. Um, we haven't put anything on for the elderly, um, but we're not against. We do put the flu clinic on every year, which is uh, wildly successful, and a lot of the elders take advantage of that at the school when we do that, and we have the visiting nurse come around. So I know that that's something that's site specific that helps them health wise. Uh, there's no two ways about that. Um, and of course, when they come to the transfer station, we're very sensitive to their needs and assistance to carrying their bags and keeping their dignity and pride intact. Uh, not saying, oh, let me get that from you, you know, and, and muscling, but, but allowing the service to be, you know, taken over. And, and, and I try to lead by example in that. Um, assisting people. Uh, I was told when I first came on board not to do that because by the time the end of the day would be done, your arms would be falling off. Well, that arm pulling action has put me back into shape. Um, on an average day, we deliver bags to the Cumberland Farms in town. Those bags weigh 50, you know, those boxes weigh 50 pounds a piece. That's 100 pounds that has to be lifted every week. I couldn't do that personally six years ago with the same ease and comfort that I do today, basically providing a service to the people in town. So inadvertently, yes, we're helping, um, but we're not creating a, you know, a center or anything of that nature, but uh, we're putting a fundraiser together, but uh, I'm sure we could entertain something of that nature if someone pre would present it to us, uh, we would follow through on it. Um, regarding the Board of Health, I mean, the elderly, um, my feeling is that it would be good if the Board of Health had a liaison that met with, uh, in the meetings with uh, the elderly commission or whatever it is named right now. Um, I might be interested in doing that anyway, whether it's uh, an idea for the Board of Health or not. You know, I'm getting up there too. So, uh, so that's something that you know I think about. I don't know what all the Commonwealth states in their manuals uh, regarding boards of health around the state and what our responsibilities are on that issue, but that's something uh, that I'm going to look into and bring to the table. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, um, the issue that George has raised about uh, the Daryl properties, I know you have some feelings about that, Dan, uh, in terms of the, uh, the abandoned house uh, initiative of the Attorney General, and I wondered if you've given that any more thought and any change in position. Uh, my, my biggest concern about that is the law that states a man's home is his castle. And I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, it's, it's a coined phrase, but it's true to, the, to, to this. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Everyone wants to go after the big bad guy, but what happens when there's no more big bad guys? Now you're going to be going after everybody and their brother because it's easy when you live in a nice house to look at everybody else's house and say that house isn't as nice as my house. So when you say, am I helping the elderly? In a way, some of the elderly people that live in this town, they're not out of it, but they choose to live a certain way. They have a purple house, or they have a pink shed, and they want to be left alone. 
They don't want somebody to come in and say, hey, when are you going to paint your shed? When are you going to paint your house? They don't have the resources. They don't have the money for that. Um, if it bothers some people to look at these things, I seriously consider, look the other way. Um, I, I know there's some that are, are, are very dilapidated and need attention. There's, there's no two ways about it. But there's other ways to get to that. I, I believe that the initiative, the housing initiative, even though adopted by several communities, like Springfield or, you know, and, and it's been wildly successful, I don't know if it best fits our community. And I'm sincere when I say that. I do, I'm very suspect of something that seems to come in like a, you know, monorail and then <laughs> you get stuck with something that's not quite what you thought it was going to be. So um, I, I wish I could get my arms around it, but I, I, I really can't, Peter. I'm sorry. And for that, I feel that I'm protecting a lot of the citizens here in town by doing so. Not the immediate aggressive, you know, people that are, that deserve it, but the people that would get it after the fact, that it wouldn't stop. It would be a modern day witch hunt. And I can't, I can't say it enough. I really can't because once it's done once, it's going to be repeated over and over again and there's no, it, it, it breaks constitutional law and I'm not going to be part of it. I don't know, Mr. Hurdle, if you're familiar with the program that Mr. I am. Okay. I don't know if you just want to speak to it or? Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, let me state that my opinion centers only on unlived in abandoned houses that are owned by banks or owned by out-of-state people who don't maintain them. And these houses that are falling down and are fire traps, uh, uh, nuisances that will draw children eventually, or that may house rats, raccoons, and all kinds of other vermin. Um, so these are the houses that I would be considering not putting widows out on the street or taking away homes from people who don't have the money to paint them. That's not, in my opinion, uh, something that I'd want to get involved with at all. Uh, but these houses have been here far too long and they need to be addressed. And they need to be torn down or sold, uh, sold at auction, however, using a, uh, a receiver, I think the word is, uh, that can be appointed by the Attorney General um, to get this done at no cost to the town of Brookfield. Uh, so that would be my opinion on the derelict houses. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Nobody? Come on, kill us. <laughs> <laughs> we will go to closing statements. Uh, Mr. Hurdle opened. Mr. Leahy, we'll go first with closing. Okay, I'm very proud of the success of the Brookfield Transfer Station. I, I really like that, uh, the fact, I'm especially proud of the fact that we, the Brookfield Board of Health, has kept the price of membership stable at $85, going on nine years, always working within our means. We're the only department that does that, I believe. My vision for the next three years is to provide a high level of service to the residents of Brookfield caring for and preserving their rights against adversity from without and within. I would really appreciate your vote on May 7th to continue to serve for an additional three years. God bless and thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hurdle? Um, and regarding the transfer station, um, I see improvements that can make that transfer station break even uh, without raising the cost of bags or trash by just uh, using different vendors and making sure that people pay for the ones, the, the items that they're supposed to pay for there. Uh, and that would be, that would be my whole uh, closing argument on that subject. Is that your closing statement? That's about it. Thank you, sir. Again, thank you very much for both of you for thank running. You. Um, we have a list of other candidates that are running unopposed. Uh, they're putting themselves out there. This is a service. You gentlemen, although you're not an elected official, a politician, uh, both you gentlemen are serving the town and thank you very much for that. Um, it, it's tough to, to work for basically nothing uh, to serve you out there. 
and these two men want to do it. People on the ballot want to do it next week, May 7th. If you don't like anybody that's on the ballot, still come out and vote. You can write in a person's name, possibly get them elected. If you're interested, start a write-in campaign. Polls are open next week, Monday, May 7th, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you're not able to come on that day, visit the town clerk. You can do a write-in ballot. You can do that physically here before the election. Please come out and vote. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, gentlemen.